Well, hi there, this is Scott Duffy, and I want to do an update to a previous video talking about performance testing within Microsoft exams. These are the labs questions or performance test questions. So this is everything we know about labs. So labs are, if you don't know, a live environment that is popped up inside of the exam. So you're at the exam center or you're taking the exam from home and in the process of taking the exam, you're going to be asked to go into a live Microsoft Azure portal and perform some tasks. Now, you're not going to be using your own account. Microsoft will give you an account to use. Not all the exams contain them, but more and more exams are being added. So now we're up to five codes that are confirmed to have these lab questions. 103, of course, 300. But now AZ301 is reported to having labs. If you haven't seen it, then it's coming. The DevOps exam is at 400 and the security exam. So labs are, are basically spreading into more and more exams. We are also hearing less and less problems with them. So it used to be quite rampant or common to hear people saying they had trouble with labs. Uh, I think some of that, that must be solved because we're not hearing that as much. So keep in mind that these performance test questions, they are quite significant. In your exam, you might have two separate uh, sets of performance lab questions. And together, out of all of the questions on the exam, it could be, you know, something like 25% of your end up score. So if you don't perform the labs, you're making it very difficult for you to pass the test. So as people are often asking, you know, what kind of topics are, should we expect to see within a performance lab test? Well, the simple answer is, when you look at the exam syllabus and the uh, this curriculum that Microsoft puts out, all of them, right? Everything that Microsoft could possibly ask is in scope. So you, in this exam, this is the AZ300 as an example. All of these topics that are listed on the exam could potentially be something that they want you to do yourself in the portal. So I, I just went through the AZ300 syllabus really quick. And I found out virtual machines, web apps, functions, storage, virtual networks. These are all the infrastructure elements, the application elements, containers, databases, scaling. I mean, almost anything. Now, when you think about it, when you really think about what it is that they're trying to test and the purpose of the test, what would they not be able to ask? And like they couldn't ask you like to create an express route gateway like you're you're just not going into those hybrid scenarios vpns there's not asking you to do live coding so there's no c sharp powershell cli as mandatory things they're not going to ask you to create brand new certificates and upload existing certificates and so let's um rule out some of those really more esoteric elements but the basic core stuff uh, all that is on the syllabus, and that's a lot of it, is still pretty much fair game. Now, I've said this before, and Microsoft reached out and said that there's some complexity here, but you can imagine that, let's say they want you to do something, but it's going to take a long time to set this up, right? So you need to encrypt the, a virtual machine hard disk, and so you need to go through this, and these things can take a while to run. So it turns out Microsoft has said, that they they basically are testing you on the initiation of the tasks, not on the completion of the task. And so if it's going to take 45 minutes to encrypt a hard disk, they can still verify that you've you've you know fired off that thing correctly. So uh, maybe there's a little bit the time is not as much a factor in terms of what they can and can't test you as it as I thought it was at some point. So they did clarify they were testing on the initiation of the task, not on the completion of the test. I have a few more minutes here. I'm going to actually simulate a performance test question, if you don't mind. So we're going to uh, pick up a question and I'm going to go into the Azure lab, the Azure portal and the, do what it says, just as an example. So let's just say you're, you're going to give you an Azure environment. They're going to give you a user ID and password, not using your own. It's going to have some existing resources and pretty much that. I'm told there are between eight and 12 questions for each environment. Okay. There is this thing that 
in general, they're not dependent on each other, but I've also been told that sometimes you'll be asked to create something like a web app, and then sometimes you'll have to then go and modify that web app or do something additional. And so there is a dependency between some questions. It, they haven't been able to completely avoid that. So here's an example. Uh, let's say you have a, a lab that has a resource group named Test1, and they want you to create a new web app, and that new web app has a funky name to it in East US region using a certain app service plan. So let's pull a portal into, into view here, and I'm gonna keep it so I can switch back and forth. But the, but the question says the resource group is named test one, and they, they want this kind of name for it. So I'm gonna go into, you'll see the resource groups already exist. So I'm gonna go into test one here, and I need to create a web app in the East US region. So I can say add, it's gonna pop up here. I can either go down here or I can type web app create. It is in the test one resource group. We verify that it's matching what they expect. It has to have a name. So let's be very, very careful here that it's Ricky 188765. Somebody's already taken this. Probably they watched my previous tutorial. So let's imagine here that it's six. All right, so the question itself doesn't tell you um, what type of app to create. So I'm just gonna assume that it's uh, .NET app. The other thing that was part of this, it has to be in the East US region and it has to be a standard S1 plan. So by this point, just clicking the create button, that should pass this test, right? So I've now successfully performed the, the things that they've asked me to. And we can see that it took me about three minutes to do that. The other, the next question down, um, we can then continue, you know, we don't have to wait for this to continue, to complete, right? We can just continue on. The next question down asked me to add a deployment slot to staging in a particular app. So test one resource group contains an existing app called legendary app. Let's go look at the question. It says, uh, add a second deployment st slot. So now I'm looking for the um, deployment slots under deployment here. And there's only one and we need to add a, a slot and it, it's called staging. And assuming leaving the defaults there. And so now with this action, we've now performed the task that it's being asked. So those two questions should give you an idea of what a performance lab is. They're gonna give you very specific actions and your job is to follow those requests uh, successfully, and then Microsoft's going to be able to test to see that it was actually done. They're going to be able to go into Legendary App and see that a deployment slot has been requested. Um, they've been able to go into um, the brand new web app that I've been asked to create. And even if the deployment is still being created, it's able to check that that succeeded. We're going to skip over the next set of questions um, as well, but these are all examples of the types of questions that they're going to want you to do. So to summarize, this performance lab is a live environment, like an Azure portal. They give you a very specific task they want you to do. And whether you do it with the uh, portal, whether you start up the Azure Cloud Shell and do a PowerShell or a CLI, however you get it done, you can get it done. And the, it's going to cover anything that's a topic of the exam. So this has been Scott. Thank you so much for checking this out. Hopefully that this gives you a little bit of comfort in the way that performance labs go, a little bit of information. If you have any questions, if you've seen something or you've heard something, uh, please let me know. Leave a comment in the bottom of this video and uh, we're going to all through all of the collective knowledge of all of us are going to uh, figure this out. And, and hopefully this will help you prepare for your upcoming test and good luck. Thanks.